Hey guys, John Marks, 2210.com. We talk watches and all things time. Today, we are unboxing the Glycine 18 World Timer GMT. Its model number is 3918-196-LBK7F. All right, let's get into it. So this morning I, uh, I received my Glycine Airman 18 World Timer GMT in the mail. It's um, bought online and packaging seems to be pretty good. Brand new. Uh, get rid of this one. Light wrapping. Standard size box, which is good to see. My last purchase was a Omega Speedmaster. Brand new. The box on that was out of control and I've got no idea what to do with it now. So it's good to see a standard size box again. Got some good glycine insignia, insignia on the front there. Open it up. Again, very standard, but happy with standard. Don't miss doing a good thing. Again, some uh, glycine labeling on the inside here. And let's see that black glycine. Open it up. Okay, what do we got? So we got the preservation gel there and a glycine international guarantee card. So full disclosure, I bought this on the gray market, so it's not going to come with an international warranty, but generally speaking, products and consumer goods are, are covered with general consumer law. So if there's any uh, overarching issues with it, um, I'm, I'm generally covered, so I'm, I'm not too fast and I don't have too much of an issue buying grey market. Uh, we've got the international guarantee card from an authorised dealer there, um, registered in May 2017, so brand new watch. We do also have a uh, just a generic uh, setting your watch hands uh, card there, it's not the GMT model you can see on there, but it's it's um, nonetheless probably the uh, same movement across the board there. Anyway. And then the watch itself, so we take a look at it. Brace around your cushion. Again, a lot of glycine insignia everywhere on the other side. And the watch itself, so we've got another protected case, we'll just take off there. And it looks beautiful. All right, so here it is, guys. We've got the Glycine Airman 18 World Timer GMT. It's got a really nice uh, finishings all around, from what I can see immediately. It's got really nice uh, flat black dial. We've got here the forehand version, which has got the hours, minutes, sort of the bubble seconds there. And the fourth hand is the GMT time. So the watch originally designed in um, in a, uh, 1953 for pilots. Its um, original purpose was for people requiring alternative time zones. So it's it's um, around the sort of era of the Rolex GMT Master when that first came out as well. See a date window there at three o'clock. We've got really nice brush finishing on the. Um, bi-directional 24 hour uh, bezel there nice coin edge to it all as well sapphire crystal front glass got a really heavily polished 316 stainless 39 millimeter case it's 11 mil thick nice tapered end lugs there solid end lugs the back is a um, exhibition case back. We've got a uh, mineral crystal um, exhibition there. It's housing the um, glycine caliber 293 automatic movement, which is based on the ETA 2893 21 joule movement. Crown, nice crown at three o'clock there. It's got some really nice just sort of um, uh, finishing there. And then we've got the glycine symbol on the bezel lock crown there at four o'clock. 
So the movement itself, like I said, is the, the, the Glycine 293 automatic. It's uh, got a 42 hour power reserve, 28, 800 vibrations per hour. It is a hacking movement. The original movement uh, in, the, in the 1953 version of the Glycine Airmans actually had a pin, they called it a hacking pin, that popped out between uh, the two and the four of the 24 hour at 12 o'clock there. When you pulled it out, uh, the crown out, pin came out of the dial and stopped your seconds hand at 12 o'clock so you're able to synchronize it to whatever the time zones were. So for this model there, we screw down crown at three o'clock and we've got um, a manual wind option straight away. And then if you rotate, if you pull it out to the first position, we've got a, um, if you rotate it clockwise, we're moving the GMT hand. If you rotate it anti-clockwise, we're adjusting the date. There we go, date window. Moving there and the GMT and moving there. So proper GMT, it's jumping hours. And then if we pop it out, you'll see the second hand stop, being a hacking movement, and rotate our time, you see the GMT time follows. So with this particular movement, the um, hours, minutes, and second hands use your conventional 12 hour system and the GMT hand uses the 24 hour system around the outer bezel so you see that they don't rotate simultaneously or well, they, they rotate together but at um, 12 hours apart. And then we pop it back in, screw it back down. So quite responsive, quite um, strong crown there. So to set the third time zone, you actually set it using the um, out of 24 hour bezel there. What you do is you just unscrew this uh, secondary crown here at six o'clock, at, uh, sorry, at four o'clock. Just unwind it, disengages the coin edge around this bezel there with these locking teeth. And then you've got your option to bi-directional bi uh, rotation and you just align the third time zone with the 24 hour GMT hand here. And then just lock it in. As far as luminescence goes, we've got the hours, minutes, and the dot on the second hand that you can see rotating that have got the uh, super luminova luminescent paint on them and then also the 12 hour locations around the dial have also got the super luminova so I'll just get a shot now of the loom. So being a 39mm uh, case it uh, it doesn't wear huge it's it's quite understated I, I typically wear a lot of vintage watches so 39mm I'm quite comfortable with that. A lot of my other watches are 36 to, to 39, so they kept their vintage sizing there. So I'll just pop it on the wrist and we'll take a look. So I think that sits really well on the wrist for a 39mm. It's um, sitting on a 6.8mm, a 6.8 inch wrist, 175mm. Nice leather strap, glycine um, on the buckle, bit of an oversized buckle. Typical for um, aviator watches. Just as a point of reference there as well, that's a comparison against the Seiko SKX007. See, it's uh, reasonably larger, but uh, just as a, a point of reference for all you guys, I don't think it is um, oversized. So if the 007 suits you quite well, I think you'd be pretty happy with the Airman as well. So I've put the Glycine Caliber GL293 automatic movement on the time grapher here. It's, like I mentioned before, it's based on the Edit 28893. And it's sitting at around that sort of plus one, plus two seconds per day. So really, really good results straight out of the box in the dial up position on the time grapher. I'll put it through its paces and just see what it gets as an as overall average, but exceptional results straight out of the box.
And that wraps it up for today, guys. Really happy with this piece. I think the accuracy is, is impressive. I think the attention to detail is excellent and happy that Glycine decided to stay true to their um, heritage there and keeping the case size, keeping a lot of the detailings similar throughout the years. If you've got any questions that I wasn't um, able to answer today, post them down below and I'll get back to you. Cheers. Don't forget to check us out at 2210.com for latest news, reviews, events, competitions, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and if you liked it, subscribe. We'll make some more if, uh, if, if people are into it. Until next time, guys, 2210.com.